In my past tutorial, Gyroptic had no ability to add a patch or watermark to their camera. In their newest version, they've added the ability. To go over how to do that, we're just going to plug in our camera and make sure it's in USB mode, and then click on Patch, the tab left, or sorry, to the right of uh, General. Once you see that, you can see that the minimum requirement is 1000 by 1000. If you have a smart object, like in our past tutorial, that has the um, watermark unadjusted without the distortion properties that we added, then just go back to that smart object and use that image only. You can export that image and upload it. You'll work with this um, new adjustment file. If you don't have Photoshop's uh, Creative Cloud and don't have the ability to create smart objects, perhaps you're using an older version, um, this will be a way to recreate the image a little bit quicker. So we're just going to go back into Photoshop and uh, make sure we follow those 1000 by 1000 minimum. So I'm just going to create a 1000 by 1000 uh, image by uh, pixel, of course, um, 72 resolution. Press OK. Uh, I'm going to select on the elliptical marquee tool and double click the background and press OK. That creates it into a layer. And then we're going to be able to create another layer. Um, and then we're going to go to the top left, hold shift, drag until we see some snaps. And there we are. We see a little bit of uh, pink. Pressing down, we're trying to get the edges as close to possible. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just press um, Alt Backspace to create that black circle. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to be turning the background uh, to black as well after. So now that we have the circle, I'm just going to copy my logo. You could put your logo in there, and uh, perhaps you might have a different color or a different look, of course. So um, Now we're just going to want to add some text. We're going to go over to the um, rectangle tool and select ellipsic, or, or sorry, um, ellipse tool, and then uh, switch shape to path. And then hold shift in the center, then press alt, drag it out to probably about there, and uh, then we're going to press this align and make sure it's aligned to canvas, and then horizontal to center, vertical to center. And uh, in this case, I actually think it's a little bit too large, so I'm going to try to reduce it. Um, now I can click this lock button and uh, changing the width by holding shift. I'm just going to be pressing down a few key times. And when I hit enter, it made the whole circle smaller because the height was adjusted as well. So I'm going to realign it and uh, still want it a bit smaller. I just want that text to be a lot bigger than our, our previous version. And uh, that looks okay. So in this case, I'm going to press T and uh, make sure it's got not the circle, but the squiggly line. And I'm going to type in 360 media created by. I'm going to press uh, the move tool so I don't select the text anymore. And then I'm going to uh, select layer two, go back to paths, click on work path. That creates that circle that we had before. And then go back to layers. And then I'm going to press T. And this way it creates a second text layer. I'm still going to go for the squiggle line. And I'm going to type in my, uh, my seligman.com. And uh, not like the previous tutorial, this will actually involve switching it. So I'm going to go over to the directional selection tool. And uh, I'm just going to hover over this text and drag it up. And now you'll see that it's within the circle. I'm going to press the move tool and press uh, shift and then the down arrow a few times. And uh, that's pretty much how I prefer it. So I'm just going to go back to layer zero. Press Alt Backspace, and then that creates the, back, the black background. Then I'm going to press Control Alt Shift S, and that will basically create the um, Save for Web, or you can go File Save for Web. Um, I'm leaving it as a PNG, and then pressing Save. Then I'm going to type in Watermark. Um, I already have one named Watermark, that's fine. I'm going to replace it, and then I'm going to back out and select Image, go to the desktop, and type in Watermark.png and it imports the image, there's the image, and then I apply it to my camera. Now, that was a bit quicker than the past tutorial, because I was talking a lot faster, of course, too, but uh, this basically does the same thing as our previous tutorial, but makes it a lot easier for us. So I'm just going to show you what I mean. So I'm going to go to this PC, and I'm going to go to the miscellaneous page, and uh, 
this is the end result. This is created from what we just provided them. And uh, basically it gives them smaller versions and different versions for formats. So just so you understand what these uh, adjustments are doing. Um, one thing that I would like to see in the future is uh, Gyroptic still has their, um, let's see, so here's a previous image I took while walking around. I'm just going to go to File, File Info, and I'm going to go to Basic. Oh, this has actually been already edited, so unfortunately it doesn't have the previous metadata. Uh, this one should, so let's go to File, File Info, then yeah, it says the burst mode. But this is what I was hoping for. The copyright notice is formatted to be copywriting, you know, the terms to Gyroptic right away. So preferably we'd like to be able to have the copyright go to ourselves. So hopefully within the future they'll add that feature within uh, their software. But uh, yeah, it looks like any new footage does allow it to go straight into the watermark. So it doesn't show that anymore, which is really good. Um, It'll show basically whichever format that you have uploaded, but um, it won't work on old media. You have to upload it again. So this is also something I noticed. Uh, it says that there's something went wrong, but uh, when I tested it, everything worked fine. So I'm not certain about their false error. Um, might be a false positive, but hopefully that all works.